coming out as a yellow line. That's because the heat still is taking so much heat, it's already cooling the liquid. So there's an added benefit to what you would normally have. Then goes through the expansion valve, up to the evaporator again, and um, that goes through the expansion valve, it goes back up to an evaporator, and that evaporator, that evaporator freezes. Air passes over that evaporator and it cools inside the freezer. So that's the basic workings of the freezer. Quite insanely, what we then do What is it about the electric race in Formula E? Well, a lot of people think it's going to be silent. It's not going to be silent. These cars actually make a fair bit of noise, but they make their own noise. It's very futuristic. It sounds a little bit like a jet engine going past. You've also got to remember that the Formula E series is intended to run in cities, in and around the roads, around the city area, not in racetracks around the world. So we'll have buildings very close to the racetrack themselves. So put 20 of these vehicles all in motor racing trim, running at speed against each other. They have their own sound, it's very unique. You'll then get the reverberation of that sound in the city area. It's going to be exciting. It's, it's, a, it's a fantastic sound actually. I've heard these things run now at such speed and you know they are, a lot of people describe them like the Millennium Falcon, like the Jetsons, you know it's, it's a whoosh of noise. Good morning, my name is Graham Davis and you're at Qualcomm, I'm Vice President. Uh, Qualcomm is involved with the Formula E programme for a, a number of years. We're actually going to be their technology partner providing technology guidance and advice on the whole series. It's all about interaction with the fan. Qualcomm's background is the mobile device. It's the handset, the smartphone, etc. Formula E want to get fans involved in the racing series. It's about bringing the electric vehicle to the streets to make it exciting for the, for the, for the drivers, make it exciting for the fans as well. So Qualcomm will be advising them on how they can bring the event experience to the handset, but also how they can improve the event experience for the, from the vehicle itself. So here we have the car itself. It's an FIA mandated car. It's going to be the same car that's used by all 10 teams around the, uh, around the 10 races throughout the world. We start in September this year and roll through to the middle of 2015. It's an all-electric vehicle. Um, it's pretty good, I think, don't you? Actually, is uh, we won the world championship, you can say this car. So it's four-wheel driven electric car, um, wheel hub motors in each wheel. We have 200 horsepower on this car, zero to 100 kilometers an hour in 2.2 seconds. Um, 22 kilometers of, of range. And we always start in September with the project. We are a team of around 30 people. In the rear of the car we have our battery container, or our, our, our accumulator box, and we can just pull it out like a drawer. 
Um, it weighs around 50 kilograms and has a capacity of stored energy of 6.2 kilowatt hours. So we do have out the front of the uh, Hotel de Paris two cars this year. One of them speaks for itself, it is the Renault Spark Formula E car. And I encourage you all to go and see that at your earliest opportunity. The other is the AMZ racing car, which is uh, a team founded in 2006 at the ETH University in Zurich. They have recently had two uh, wins, four podiums, a uh, new world record in acceleration, and first place in Formula Student Electric uh, uh, Grand Prix. So again, I encourage you to go and see both of these cars which are sitting in front of the Hotel de Paris. Looking for an investment of about 1.5 to 2 million euros uh, to expand our businesses. We're with a team of six people. We started one and a half years ago, and we already have two OEMs in our portfolio. My name is Jan de Heijn. My name is Frank Gielissen and we are from Real City Company. And our company makes sure that your commercial electric vehicles are 100% range reliable. With an electric vehicle, you will always have the risk of running out of battery. And with our system, you will not. Okay, and we are looking for an investment of 1.5 to 2 million euros to expand our activities. And with your help, we're going to be there. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm Arun Jaide, uh, I'm the Director of Operations for Advanced Materials. Uh, we're commercializing a very interesting technology for air quality control uh, that does a, it feels like a paint and is applied as a paint, but can reduce pollution uh, effects and air quality issues by 90%, uh, both biological, so there's no germs, no bacteria, no volatile organic compounds or carcinogenic compounds in the house and we help save energy because we last uh, we insulate the walls and uh, we save money uh, by 50% on the painting cost and 50% uh, on the maintenance and the interesting bit is that we can clean the air from bad, bad odor as well. Uh, we are in a first year of operation, uh, we are profitable today in our operations we have plans to expand the team and to do uh, business development. We are a commercialized company and I'm looking right now to raise a small chunk of money, that's around two and a half to three million, to build out a team to meet some customer requirements and business development. And uh, I'm looking uh, for people with market experience to join the board as well. system 
that it evolves around the flywheel embedded within each unit. So when everyone walks on the tile, as you can see on this graph here, you get constant power output. So under constant footfall of people standing on the tile, you'll get a 12 volt fat power feed that is continuously on. So with 100 tiles in an array, you've got a perfect source of trickle charging batteries or directly powering illumination. Um, the benefits of our device is that it's really durable. We've had it tested up to 150 million steps, which equates to around 80 years use. LRC belongs to H2 Industries. Industries H2 Industries is inventing the first hydrogen storage based on liquids. So we can store, we can store, our company H2 Industries can store hydrogen directly into a liquid. So the most invention and the most, uh, the biggest problem on the other case, uh, on the other side is that hydrogen industry and fuel cells belong together, but there's still existing the chicken and egg problem. But if you are using this kind of oil, you can store hydrogen gas directly in this liquid. Every liter of LHC has a hydrogen impact of more than 1.8 kilowatt hours. So 17 liters of LHC can store more than one kilogram of hydrogen. This is amazing if you compare it to other storage technologies for hydrogen. My name is Stefan Möller. I'm on, since 20 years, no, more or less 20 years, in fuel cell and hydrogen business. I believe in this business. But to solving the hydrogen storage problem, we have to use liquid oils. That we can use existing hydrogen infrastructure and existing hydrogen and fossil fuel infrastructure, like on the gasoline station. Because it's not toxic and it's under ambient conditions purely safe and less toxic than fossil fuels like diesel and gasoline. Thank you for your cooperation. Our previous initiative which we are going to Welcome to Kazakhstan.
Since ancient times, Kazakhstan has been playing a significant role in the trade space between Russia, China, India, and Europe. Three out of five BRICS countries are located in the direct vicinity of Kazakhstan, thus providing access to the market of more than half a billion people. Since 2010, along with Russia and Belarus, Kazakhstan has become the member of the Customs Union. In 2012, the three countries established a common economic space. Kazakhstan's media plans include accession to the World Trade Organization. Moreover, to improve its investment climate, Kazakhstan actively works with the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. Integration into the world transportation system is one of the key priorities to develop the national trade capacity. The transcontinental Western Europe Western China Road Corridor is a strategic next generation project. Once in operation, the cargo delivery peculiarities is its stability of the political system. The scales of international events held within its borders demonstrate constant improvement of the country's international image as a stable geopolitical partner. The fact that Kazakhstan's capital will host the International Exhibition Expo 2017 serves as yet another the bright evidence of this. According to the Doing Business 2014, the international report, Kazakhstan is among the top 50 countries as to the ease of doing business, taking 22nd place in the field of investors' protection and 18th place in the field of the taxation system. As far as Kazakhstan has the most favorable tax conditions among the CIS countries and countries of Eastern Europe. The rate of the corporate income tax is 20% and the value added tax is of 12%. One succeed to maintain such rapid development of the state also owing to innovative reforms in the sphere of education. Whether I may bump up or bump down the chairman, uh, but it's a great honor to be here uh, with such excellent and interesting panelists. I'm sure that their views on various matters will be very interesting for everybody. Uh, the way we're going to run this is uh, I have, uh, we'll start to just give us some, uh, just tell us some of the technologies and types of technologies you would bet on, that you think are going to be successful, commercial successes over the coming years, and then obviously the other guys can pile them up. Uh, inevitably, I will start with one that we've uh, been developing at Water in a but um, it's, not, it's not me, it's been colleagues. I think that um, technologies around advanced, advanced oxidation processes, uh, so that's things such as um, UV mediated um, catalysis with TiO2, uh, they, they will have application probably initially in drinking water treatment, I think, uh, for uh, removal of the emerging priority pollutants. Personally, I also think that uh, I, I'm, I'm mainly uh, dirty, dirty water, uh, uh, the, the ugly stepsister, as uh, Justin referred to, referred to it, but it's much more interesting than clean water. Um, I, I do think that the, the idea of um, uh, a wastewater treatment works as a resource factory is going to uh, is going to gain ground, and, and I think that it's not just about the individual clever unit operations. Um, I think it is about how you put those unit operations together to uh, reduce energy usage, um, recover resources uh, as part of that process. So one uh, one just one without wishing to steal any of anybody else's thunder that I think will will come up, there will be ambient temperature anaerobic processing. And it's, to some extent, uh, the, the perils of being on the panel is you never know what the panelist before you was going to say. Uh, so by extension to what uh, Tom mentioned in terms of treating wastewater, uh, I'm paraphrasing, not as a problem but as a resource, one man's waste is another man's uh, resource. Um, I think it's not just about recovering materials uh, from just the water treatment plant or the wastewater treatment plant. I think it's about looking at the whole water and wastewater delivery network as a resource, looking at mining in that resource. And the technologies that I'm particularly excited about at the moment are those that recover energy from the network itself, from the moving fluid, whether that fluid be water or wastewater. Uh, now, as, a, as a, someone with a, a little enough science to be dangerous, I still can't get my head around all the business concepts that are out there because sometimes they appear to be generating energy from nowhere and you cannot create or destroy energy, you can only you know, shift it from one form to another. So I think that 
sector or subsector has some work to do in terms of convincing hard scientists, but there are very promising results and trials out there. From my mother, to the other two guys as well, I think way more exciting business is for the most exciting investment to come be in the next 10 years. I think we're very close to the point where um, a wastewater plant will no longer be called a wastewater plant, it will be called a used water reclamation center. Uh, within the next 10 years, we'll be able to turn that from an energy sink into an energy producer. So, it, but one of the biggest problems there will be convincing a bureaucracy to go from a cost center philosophy to a profit center philosophy. Uh, but there, there's a range of technologies lining up dealing with uh, interception of uh, BOT, the, the organic material coming into a wastewater plant, sending it to a digester. That material has three to four times the energy value of typically what goes to digester. What goes through will be two-thirds less the energy content, so it will take two-thirds less energy to create it. Before we start, well, we do have out front of the uh, Hotel of the Parry two cars this year. One of them speaks for itself, it is the Renault Spark Formula E car, and I encourage you all to go and see that at your earliest opportunity. The other is the AMZ Racing Car, which is uh, a team founded in 2006 at the ETH University in Zurich. We have two missions. The first one is to help individuals and companies to relocate their business to Monaco. The second one, as soon as the government has authorized the company, we support the businesses locally and internationally. And uh, welcome to Monaco. Uh, first, I, I would like to, to thank you uh, for giving me the opportunity to present to you uh, Monaco's uh, sustainable development policy. At the initiative of his Serene INS, uh, Prince Albert II, the government implemented a sustainable development policy based on four cornerstones natural heritage management, the implementation of the climate and energy plan, promoting a sustainable town, and mobilizing Monaco's community towards the embracement of an eco-responsible conduct. Starting with Hello everybody, I'm Lorenzo Bavelli, I'm the CEO of uh, Green Art Monaco. We're a Monaco company uh, specialized in the, in the field of uh, energy and uh, data harvesting. Uh, we use tesserated uh, material to transform the, the kinetic energy of uh, pedestrian and vehicle uh, in motion. Basically, the, the concept of, the, of our technology is fully integrated in the infrastructure. And we can uh, harvest energy and data at the same time and transmit it by uh, wireless connection. Uh, our technology. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great pleasure to be here speaking in uh, Monaco. I've only been here twice before. And both of them were very uh, pleasurable experiences. And I hope me making a presentation to you today. I can work this out. Yeah. The topics that I'd like to touch on are the global challenge that we face and some discussion, short discussion about sustainability but I think you all know that and then I'd like to talk about electrification of vehicles, vehicle intelligence and the fun bit we talk about motorsport and how we're going to develop sustainable motorsport going forward. If we really want to achieve 80% emission of CO2 we have to go to the electric vehicle or the fuel cell vehicle. But actually, even if we do that as a corporation in Nissan Renault, it doesn't work. We need renewable hydrogen and we need renewable electricity. So that's the challenge that we face. We were telling this story, as I say, as we launched Leaf. But we weren't sure if everybody was telling the same story. Were all the other manufacturers going in the same direction? We had some idea. And in the UK, as was mentioned, we were in this new automotive innovation and growth team. And we realised that each manufacturer was going to the government and telling a story. And we'd do it on one week, Jaguar Land Rover would go the next week, and Ford would go the next week. We'd all tell the story. My experience of an electric car is 
very good. It's the first reaction from everybody who drives an electric car is usually it's just like a normal car. And then after thinking about it for a little while, they start to say, well actually it's better than a normal car because I've got instant acceleration and it's very quiet. So in, a, in an isolated case, the electric car can be the solution. It's clean and it's very nice to drive. The issue is, as I mentioned, about customer usage. If you want to drive long distances, then the range and charging infrastructure issues are what prevents you doing that. And so therefore the electric vehicle as it stands is currently not the solution. If we can improve the battery technology and the efficiency of the electric motors and extend the range, I believe it could become a solution, or one of the solutions. But people are, customers are still not prepared <coughs> to compromise on the long journey, even if, you know, we've got statistics which show 89% you know, of journeys are less than the range of the electric vehicle, and the electric vehicle could be the car that you could use all through the year. Then they want to go on holiday for one, one fortnight that involves moving from the north of France to the south of France. Customers are still want to select their vehicle based on that event, not necessarily on the other 95% of the events. So whilst we can deliver the technology, there is still a lot of education required, there's still a lot of customer acceptance. And I think we've been plowing the, the mass market for all with uh, EV and Tesla are absolute respect for what they've done, particularly uh, with the Model S. And now with Volkswagen, embraces and wants to foster and help achieve what they want to achieve. But I have to tell you that even though Jit's company, which you know is a tiny, tiny, small company, I spoke to the chief technology officers of two of the largest companies in the world. They each recognize each other as leaders in electrification and telematics. But they said to them, the leading independent company in the world in electrification and telematics is Mission Motors. That was a ringing endorsement of what Jim and, and, and Mission had done. So I've kind of introduced you, Jim. Um, what I'd like to do is ask uh, Yane to introduce herself, uh, Jerry Renaud, and, and Greg to introduce as well, just to set the scene a little bit about uh, what you got. Um, the, the Gene Ventures is corporately defined to GM. Uh, we, were, we started to find uh, about four years ago, focusing on uh, different kinds of innovative technology. So good, good morning, everybody. My name is Greg Larson, uh, Vice President of Technology within Qualcomm. Uh, I've been with Qualcomm for sort of nine years now. In both a small company and a large company. But for the past few years, we've been running an innovation team that was looking at various new innovation technologies that are of interest to Qualcomm that are adjacent to something Qualcomm already does. What came out? The platform is a way to develop new electric power chain technologies in areas such as battery systems, power electronics, and electric motors. The same core elements of the powertrain that are going into something like a Nissan Leaf, uh, except that we were developing for a motorcycle. We achieved notoriety because in 2011, we took a motorcycle uh, prototype that we developed, uh, a bike that could achieve a top speed of over 260 kilometers per hour. We took it to the Laguna, Ra uh, Laguna Seca Raceway in Monterey, California, and we set the lap record for all electric vehicles. Uh, that was against a Tesla Roadster, a Tesla Model S, even Formula One electric cars. Uh, we set the lap record by almost seven seconds. Uh, part of that was because it was a motorcycle, but also because our motorcycle was very high now, what are we able to do as a company <coughs> this, uh, uh, to demonstrate that they made some investments to make profits for a limited market? Very different situation with uh, corporate venture. And I would say that today we probably have inverted that percentage. So, seven years later, we probably have 60 to 70 percent of investors here who are actually representing large companies. So, the fear of small companies, particularly 
with sex. Um, I want to also listen to the gentleman who speaks the uh, California language of you, with that love. Um, I'm social media, so... Electric cars are not just about efficiency, they're also about uh, driving experience. So, uh, I kind of visit in your, in your presentation and I was wondering, uh, to what extent do you think that driving experience will influence the evolution of uh, car technology? Because, for example, hydrogen technology is not able to boost uh, as much power out of its powertrain technology as electric cars. So, how does this relate to the strategy of Renault Nissan? Okay. This was a work for five years. We did it together with Mongol Car, but we have now the experience. I would say Qualcomm is on the right way. Uh, this is more a lifestyle product. The, all what is electric cars, what is hydrogen, it's not about fears, it's about I want to see some guy whom I know who makes an impact. When Turi did it in Monaco, they hired some, or they went together with a very famous artist. Maybe you all know him. But I want to finish this. What products you did good? I mean, you are the Californian style, and you go around, you will have the success, and the electric car is coming, the electric powertrains are coming in all applications. There is no way that that comes now. I think General Motors did once very good in Monaco. I was test driving the Opel Safira hydrogen full fuel cell car. This was excellent. Uh, my wife Peter was test driving in this nice, Nissan Leaf. That was an exceptional event. We went uh, in front uh, of the uh, of the promenade Angier of the hotel, and there was the famous um, Top Gear effect. An Audi in front of us, and men said, "Push the gas pedal." Well, that is an acceleration. I was wondering, I felt it, I had to remove the YouTube scene because we were already on 70 kilometers per hour. I never forget that. This is a perfect little cluster. So you have all good products, but uh, I want to come back to what Mungo Park did over the years. Technology companies, science to market, look for financing. I think it's difficult. I was in Detroit at Ford. Uh, General Motors will be not different to, to negotiate with you. I would negotiate with you, Nissan in the UK. I would not negotiate with Renault in France. I would negotiate with Mercedes-Benz, but I would not negotiate with Volkswagen. Too conservative. You see that? And I think uh, without a service from Mungo Park, anyway, I wouldn't do it. Because uh, there is my technology, how I want to protect it without you taking it and don't pay me. That's a big problem for the small companies. Do they have the money for that? No, we didn't touch on the IP issue, but I think that's, uh, that's really quite, quite effective. It's an FIM under to the car. It's all 